here's the San Francisco cable car coming into the turntable at the end of the line. It's going to turn through an angle of about 150 degrees, I think, counterclockwise. And they're doing this by hand. And then they're going to push it down this, down back the other way. Okay. All right, we're going to use this situation involving the San Francisco streetcar to look at a variety of concepts here to do with trigonometry. We are going to show this angle in standard position. We're going to write it in radians as an exact value. We are going to write it in radians as an approximate decimal value. We're going to look at its reference angle, find a few coterminal angles, and look at the distance that a point on the outside travels around. All right, so let's look at the first of those. Showing it in standard position. Have another picture down here and some space to work with. Now we know that cable car came in like that and came to rest on the on the turntable there. And I took a guess that the angle it turned through was about 150 degrees from there around to there, from the initial arm to the terminal arm up here. If we want to put that in standard position, you'd put it so that the initial arm is on the positive x-axis. And then since this thing is a counterclockwise angle that that streetcar is turning, that's a positive angle on here. That's approximately what it looks like in standard position. Now that second thing we were going to look at was to write this angle, which I should put on here in the first place, 150 degrees, to express that a couple different ways in radians. If you wanted to write that as an exact angle in radians, well, you can write it as 150 and multiply that by pi over 180. Or in other words, just write it as 150 pi over 180. 150 degrees is 150 pi over 180. Or in lowest terms, 5 pi over 6. Now, it doesn't necessarily make much sense to write an exact angle when this started out being my rough estimate of the angle. But to illustrate the concept, we're going to do it here anyways. What might make more sense is to write it as uh, an approximate angle in decimal form. If you want to do that, just take either one of those expressions and use your calculator to evaluate what they are. So our calculator here, we'll put the simpler one in, which is 5 pi divided by 6 gives us about 2.6. Now again, we're it was a rough estimate to begin with, so probably 2.6 is the only accuracy we want there. But if this was a more exact situation, you could take more, or approximately 2.6. Now, you can you could put kind of radians or rad or something after it if you want, but really radians, there's no units to it because it's just a ratio of, of distances. All right, but either of those forms exact or approximate. Now the next thing we're going to look at is its reference angle. Now its reference angle is this little tiny angle in here. Reference angle is the small angle that uh, the terminal arm makes with the x-axis. Now what that means in our situation is this little angle in here. It's the closest way back to get to the axis that it started at. Even though the car would be pointing the opposite way if it made that little turn there, that's the reference angle, getting back to the axis you started on. On our set of axes over here in standard position, we're talking about the closest way to get back to that axis is this angle in here. So that angle in there, if this is 150 degrees, that little leftover angle is 30 degrees. If we call the original angle theta and this angle theta r, there's a few different ways you can write that. Theta r is 30 degrees. Or if we want it in radians, if this was 5 pi over 6 around to there, then the leftover part is going to be 1 pi over 6, or pi over 6. Or if you want your approximate value, you need to think halfway around is pi, and then I'm going to take off that first part. So go to your calculator, and you're going to just go pi minus that angle. So we'll go answer 
about point, point 0.5, point 0.52, right? So 0 0.52, lots of different ways to write it there. Really all of those should be approximately equal to since I just estimated anyways, but again, we won't worry about that. Let's make some more space here and look at the next thing we're gonna do, which was to find some angles that were coterminal with that. If we're gonna look at some coterminal angles, let's think about what that means in the actual situation, because this is a good situation for it. That streetcar turned through that angle and ended up so that it could take off that direction, right back where it came. A coterminal angle is one that ends in the same place. So as long as it ends in that place, any other angle is coterminal with that. So instead of turning that way, well, it could have turned the other way if this, as long as this turntable is capable of that, right? Could have turned that way and ended up in the same direction to leave. Or it actually could have, if we really wanted to entertain all the people standing in line, so they have to wait even longer, could have gone more than once around there and stopped there. Or really, it could have gone twice around and got there or whatever, right? Any of those angles are coterminal with this one. So if we want to make a list of these things here, well, 150, if we're doing it in degrees, 150 is that angle. Or if you add on another full turn, 360 degrees, you're going to get 510. Or if you add on another full turn, you're going to get 870 and so on. You could keep doing that, right? Or you could subtract, right? You could go, you know, subtract a full turn and that would leave you with that, that negative angle, negative 210, right? In fact, the simplest thing to do here is to write a general expression for this. 150 degrees plus multiples of 360. 360 and, right? That's a general expression for all the angles that are coterminal, where n's an integer, all right? Now, if we want to work with this in radians, let's start with our five pi over six. If we're gonna add on full turns onto here, full turn is two pi, or 12 pi over six. Since we're working with pi over six here, you gotta think of what two pi is in terms of a fraction out of six. So our next one, if we're making a list here, move this down here, make a list, right? The next one would be, 17, pi over six, one after that, another 12, pi over six added on. All right, you could keep going that way. You go the other way too, you could subtract, right? Because just like with degrees, you could subtract. You could go back this way, right? And you'd end up with this angle right here, which is a negative angle. If that pink one is five pi over six, that other one's negative seven pi over six. You get that just by subtracting, right? You could write a general expression for this as well. You'd have your starting angle plus the, you know, the period you're rotating it in, which is multiples of two pi, right? So that's a general expression here. Now you could do the same thing if we had done, um, if we'd use our approximate value, right? Because you could say it's approximately equal to 2.6, since exact values again don't make much sense for something that I did a rough approximation, but that would be an expression for this. All right, so whether you measure it in degrees or radians. Any of those angles that we looked at here would get that streetcar back to the right direction so that it can leave. Now the last thing we were to look at here is how far a point on the edge of this would travel. If we had a point right here, and as that thing turned, how far would it travel around the edge of the circle to get to that point once the turning had stopped? In other words, what's the length of this arc here, which I'm going to call A, if we know what the central angle is theta, and we know what the radius of the circle is r now let's get some of this stuff out of the way so we have some room to work there we go now if you want to find that arc length we need to know something more about this circle we know the angle is 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6 radians but what we don't know is something about the size of the circle, the radius here. Now, when I was there, I uh, saw some information about the cars, and these single-ended cars that need to be turned around are about 27 or 28 feet long, and they stuck out past the edge here pretty significantly when they were on that turntable. So I'm going to make a rough estimate here of this diameter. To me, it seemed like that diameter was about 16 feet. And so our radius was, let's say, 8 feet. I'm approximating. And we had our theta was two different things here. We can do 150 degrees 
4, 5 pi over 6, or about 2.6. Now to find that arc length, we could set up a proportion like I've done in previous videos, or the simplest way is if you know what the angle is in radians, you can just use that if you understand what that angle measure means. An angle in radians is a measurement of how many radii around you've gone. All right. So if you know that you have 2.6 radians, it's really easy to find that distance around the outside. There's even a formula for it that we've developed before. That arc length is equal to whatever your angle is in radians times the radius, right? Because this is 2.6. 2.6 radians means around the edge of the circle for this angle you've gone 2.6 times the radius. So if you just go 2.6 times the radius you get the right thing. That gives us about 20.8 here. So I'm going to say since it's all approximate anyways it's about 21 feet around the edge of that circle. All right simplest way using that radian measure. All right so there's a whole variety of things to do with trigonometry. Alright, so there's a whole variety of trig concepts that we've Alright, so there's a whole variety of trig concepts that we've used All right, so there's All right, so I think that brings us to the end of the list we had up above. There's a whole variety of trig concepts all within that one context of the streetcar coming in to turn around to go back the other way. Hopefully it's helped you uh, make some connections between those concepts and helped you understand better.